Hello, I'm Tony Mann, and I'm lucky enough to teach mathematics at the University of Greenwich in wonderful buildings by one of my favourite mathematicians, Sir Christopher Wren. I'm going to show you how you can use mathematics to score 100% in any exam. But first, I want to show another example of the power of mathematics to surprise us by showing us something which we might not have expected. So in the big internet math off, this is the last of the first round matches, so seven competitors are already through to the quarterfinals, and only this final match is to be decided. So out of eight quarterfinal places available, there are now nine people left, so as one of these nine, the probability that I will be in the last eight is clearly eight ninths. This surprises me because my opponent is very formidable and I thought I was the underdog. But in fact, my opponent also has an eight ninths chance by the same logic. So if we investigate further, we see that by basic probability, the probability that both my opponent and I will be in the last eight is eight ninths times eight ninths, which is 64 over 81, or just under 80%. So that tells us that there's more than a 20% chance that someone who's already won the first round match will not be in the quarterfinal. I assume this will be because of a retrospective red card or VAR or something like that. So this is an example of mathematics showing us something we might not have suspected. And by the way, if you're fool, if you are persuaded by this argument, please get in touch. I'd like to play some games of chance with you for large stakes. Anyway, how to score 100% in any exam? Suppose that I'm taking an exam in quantum theory. Now, I do not understand quantum mechanics. But by this method, I can score 100%. Think of the number pi, the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. We believe that pi contains any finite sequence of decimal digits you care to think of. So, for example, if we're looking for the sequence 5, 9, we can find it in pi here, or indeed here, or here, and in many other places. And the same applies for any sequence of digits, however long. Now, there is a perfect set of answers to the exam. So if we knew this perfect set of answers, we could encode it as numbers. We might, for example, encode A as 0, 0, B as 0, 1, up to Z as 25, and then we can use 26 to 99 for punctuation marks, mathematical symbols, and so on. And if we want to be efficient, we could use a Huffman code. Doesn't matter how we do it, so we can write the perfect answers to our exam paper as a sequence of decimal digits, and that sequence of decimal digits will be somewhere in pi. That's fine if, like Liu Chao, we know enough digits of pi, but I don't know many, so I need another method. Fortunately, all I need to do is think of a random integer, because the probability that any integer I choose at random will contain the encoded answers to the exam questions is 1. To see that, suppose we're looking for the sequence 1, 7. It only occurs in one of the first 100 integers. But if you go up to the first 1,000, it occurs 10 times as the last two digits, and another 10 times as the first two digits, 170, 171, etc. So there are 20 of 1,000 integers which contain 17. And we can see that if we choose a big enough range of integers, the proportion that do not contain the string we want can be less than any number we wish. So, with probability 1, a random integer will contain the perfect answers to the exam paper. So how do I score 100% in my exam? I first of all think of a random integer, then I decode the digits until I come to the perfect set of answers to the exam questions. It's as simple as thinking of a random number. Well, I suppose there's one minor difficulty. The random integer will not only contain the correct answers, it will also contain many wrong answers. So you have to be able to recognise the perfect answer when you see it and reject any plausible but incorrect answers. I suppose I should also say that there's a slight issue regarding how you think of a genuinely random number of arbitrary size. That's my method for success in exams. Thank you for listening. And I should say that the idea came from something I read in Martin Gardner many years ago. Goodbye.